Uh, so there's a little bit of um, uh, science mixed with, with unscience. So I was born in, uh, in 1981, and, and so uh, I was born in China. So in the U.S., um, there's something called the 80s baby, and, and they uh, grow up and, and get um, sort of acquainted with, uh, with uh, Game Boy and Nintendo, with rock and roll and so forth. But when, when I was growing up in China, uh, rather than being sort of exposed to all these kinds of um, uh, popular culture, like Back to the Future, uh, different kinds of Hollywood uh, science fiction movies, um, I was exposed to a different kind of science. And, uh, or different kinds of emphasis on science, and, and some of you may have mentioned this. <laughs> so, so in China, um, you know, growing up, uh, my parents um, uh, worked for, for the academy of science, and, and they uh, always emphasize, you know, study science, uh, really, really try to, um, to make a contribution, be a scientist. That's the highest calling uh, that you can, you can uh, pursue. And so, so growing up in that environment, um, I became really very interested in science. I read science fiction books, uh, looked up to people who were uh, developing various uh, kinds of uh, new uh, technology. So, um, China was a great place to grow up. Um, so I finished my fifth grade uh, in uh, Shenzhen in China, and then uh, and then my parents um, uh, immigrated to the United States. And so, in 1993, uh, I went from Shenzhen uh, all the way to uh, to Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, and so Des Moines, uh, right in the heartland of the United States. Uh, was really, really a very welcoming place, and, and I um, went from a place where it, there's millions of people. Um, if you walk down the street, it's just crowded, um, to to a very welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> I was very flat. There are many farm animals, many many uh, cross species, and so forth. Uh, it was really a great place. It's not as um, as, as uh, lonely uh, as this. So this is this is uh, downtown Des Moines. <laughs> this is state capital, and and, and, and it's still a nice um, little town. And and Iowa was really a fantastic place to grow up. Um, there was great uh, education system. Uh, there was fantastic uh, teachers, mentors. And so um, I first uh, enrolled in the Calhoun Middle School, and um, and it was a really um, a, Iowa is really a state that focused on education. So when I first came to the U.S., I didn't speak any, any English at all, and um, and they had um, assigned me a dedicated translator who spoke Chinese and a couple of other languages, and he would follow me uh, to all my different classes and, and just really help me uh, get acclimated to, to this new environment. So I, I really um, owe quite a bit uh, to uh, to these kinds of um, uh, support that they provided me, and I was really. Um, a great place with many educational opportunities, and so um, in middle school they showed me a movie called Jurassic Park, which piqued my interest in biology. Um, I really didn't like biology uh, at all before seeing this movie um, because it's mostly about dissecting uh, little frogs or or identifying different anatomical parts, all based on memorization, uh, which which I found to be um, uh, not not all that exciting. So um, through um, the class that I uh, watched this movie in, um, the science teacher who um, taught that class uh, remembered that I was interested in and wanted to learn more about molecular biology, which is what they use here uh, to generate Jurassic Park. By the way, there's a new, new version that's coming out very soon. Um, and so by the time I was in um, high school, um, he uh, came to me and said, there's this really fantastic opportunity uh, to work in a local hospital and they have a gene therapy lab that does a lot of molecular biology. Uh, why don't you try to go to this gene therapy lab and, um, and you can get some first-hand experience. And so um, I went there and applied to their program and I got, um, got accepted by the corporate academic program, CAP, and, um, and, and so I started there. Um, the federal regulation for working at BL2 lab, um, bio, level, bio uh, safety level two, is 16 years old. So, so as soon as I turned 16, uh, I, I started to go to the lab. And there, um, I think had I not had that experience, I probably wouldn't be doing biology today. Um, I had a really fantastic mentor, uh, John Levy, who was a staff scientist there. He was extremely patient, extremely knowledgeable, and, uh, and for someone like me, a um, uh, high school student who really knew nothing, uh, he would sit down with me in the, in the break room, tell me about science, um, and, and be very patient and, and just tell me all everything that he knows. And so 
through that experience, um, I, it really uh, made a very deep impression on me. And, and so because of that, I continued to, uh, to become very, very interested in biology, uh, to um, learn uh, both basic biology, but also uh, eventually maybe uh, one day uh, translate this uh, research learning into uh, practical applications uh, to improve human health. And so, so this was really uh, a great um, opportunity. And so working there, uh, I started to, um, to work with uh, viral vectors and, and also um, working with different kinds of proteins uh, that were uh, coming from uh, uh, species, different species of organisms that are very exotic, like green fluorescent protein, um, or um, building viral vectors that they were using to treat uh, different kinds of cancer, um, cancer patients uh, by delivering uh, uh, toxic genes into the tumor cells. So uh, through these experiences, um, I, I realized that biology is really very exciting. Uh, ultimately, um, it's, a, it's a system that's programmable. Um, maybe we can engineer it to, to, to do very powerful and very useful things. And so when I went to college, um, I continued to, um, to pursue biological research. And so at Harvard, I then worked with two uh, professors, uh, Don Wiley, um, and Don was one of the foremost uh, crystallographers and I worked in his lab for about a year. And then following that, uh, Xiao Wei um, had just opened her lab at Harvard and I was fortunate enough to be one of the uh, first undergrads to, to work with her. It was really a fantastic experience. And both of them were, were fantastic mentors who taught me uh, how to think about biological problems, how to design experiments and so forth. And from, from these early um, experimental investigations, um, I started to um, get some appreciation of, of molecular biology and how we can use molecular biology uh, to, to solve um, uh, disease-related problems. And one thing in college that I became very fascinated about is how the human uh, brain works. And so the human brain is really one of the most complicated organs uh, throughout the body. And, and being able to understand um, how it functions and, and how something that this functions uh, lead to specific diseases, uh, I thought it was one of the most uh, fascinating and also most important problems. Um, being an undergrad at Harvard um, was also not one of the most easy places to be. Um, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of competition, and so I had friends uh, who, um, when I was undergrad, also started to, uh, to really cope with uh, mental um, psychiatric conditions. And so all these um, started to really pique my interest to, to study uh, the brain. And so following uh, undergrad, I went to um, Stanford and I, there I encountered uh, another really phenomenal mentor who um, had a profound impact on, on my um, thinking and also training, and that's uh, Carl Dyserov. So Carl was particularly um, inspiring because he was not only a scientist, a, a really, um, really insightful neuroscientist, but he's also a practicing psychiatrist. And he, his research is really, um, in many ways, guided by his interest in understanding um, what is happening in the brain and what is happening when the brain is not working properly. And, and so um, when, I, when I started to rotate, um, do my rotation uh, as a graduate student at Carl Dyserath's lab, um, he mentioned to me that um, one of the really important uh, challenges for understanding how the brain works is how is understanding how cells signal to each other and how cells are able to form connections uh, that represent neural uh, circuits. And so it's there um, over the next uh, five years at Stanford that um, me, uh, me and Carl and also uh, Ed Boyden, who is also a faculty member at MIT, uh, we started to develop a new technology and that's called optogenetics uh, today. Um, in essence, um, it's, a, it's a technology where we harvested um, proteins from this pond scum, uh, green algae, and transplanted a light-sensitive protein uh, that these algae is naturally evolved uh, into neurons in the brain of animals. And uh, cells in the, in the brain are normally not uh, <coughs> sensitive to light. And